Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. It's January and I'm here at Honeymoon Island State Park near Tampa and Clearwater. This is a barrier island accessible by a causeway. It's got some beautiful beaches and fantastic beach combing. Today as I'm walking along, I'm seeing a lot of horseshoe crabs, a lot of cool shells, a lot of different species of sponges. Check out my sponge episodes. And then I came across a hammerhead shark. Go figure. <laughs> uh, this was my most surprising find. And there's great beach coming here. I guess since there's been a hurricane, Hurricane Milton, Hurricane Helene, a lot of different stuff has been washed up. And I have never seen so many of these shells, these are called pen shells, lying on the beach and exciting to me to find them virtually intact with both matching size of this bivalve is a mollusk with two shells on it that make the two halves. And today's episode is going to be about the pen shells and the really fascinating biology about this particular species. The scientific name for these is Pina rigida and they're very interesting in their fan shape in the way the shell grows and spreads out, and also for the fact of these bumps that they have, these knots that grow as part of the shell here on the top. And these shells are shaped like a quill pen, and so they're given the name pen shells. Shells in the pen shell family can be some of the largest in the world. Some of the Mediterranean ones are over two feet across. Another interesting feature of these pen shells is the smooth nacre that's produced here inside of the shell itself. And this is the same substance that if there's an irritating thing that has entered into the shell, it can coat that irritating thing with nacre. And that's how pearls are made. And in some species of these pen shells, you can find black pearls inside. They're very common in shallow waters near seagrass beds, and they'll actually embed in the sand in these places. When they're alive, the biomass or the tissue inside can be a bright orange color. You find them most commonly on beaches after a wind or wave event. So when pen shells are alive, they actually sit deep in the sand, probably about up to this level here, and are anchored down in that sand. They'll open up this part of their shell to extend siphons, and they'll siphon in water and remove filter feed, algae, and nutritious particles, and return the water out. They can filter up to 40 or 50 gallons of seawater. So mollusks, just like this pen shell, are very important in water quality, in maintaining water quality, clarifying water, and also taking nutrients out of the water and changing them into biomass. Mollusks like this that live stationary in the water have threads that come out of the bottom here that help anchor it. All the threads together are called the bisous, and individual threads are called bissel threads. These threads were actually collected in ancient times in the Mediterranean and used to make a very sophisticated, fancy cloth that was made just from the threads of these. And I'm trying to imagine how many mussels, how many of these clams you would have need to collect enough of those threads to make a cloth out of it. And of course, the cloth was very fine and very expensive. I don't have an actual photo of bisel threads coming out of pen shells, but here's a photo of bisel threads on two other different kinds of mollusks. One is a zebra mussel, and they're used by these uh, mussels that don't move around by mollusks that want to be stationary. You can see that on a lot of these shells, there's uh, different kinds of animals that have attached to them. And these organisms are very important 
in creating structure for a lot of different species, increasing biodiversity of a bay by providing attachment points for things like barnacles and oysters and other kinds of mollusks and other things to that need to attach in a place where you just got shifting sands carried by the current and sediments. So these shells are important to the ecology for filtration and nutrient removal, but then they're even more important for providing structure in places where you just have sand bottoms and you don't have structure, thereby increasing biodiversity. I'm often asked, are these shells edible? And the answer is yes, they are. They have a large muscle called an abductor muscle that is very similar to the abductor muscle in scallops and are as good to eat as scallops themselves. If you're in Florida, there's a lot of regulations associated with collecting live mollusks. Um, you need to check with the Department of Fish and Game and also check for closures due to pollution of different areas where mollusk harvesting is banned because of water pollution. These guys biomagnify nutrients and bacteria. They're filter feeders. They collect tons and tons of water. And if there's pollutants in there, if there's bacteria in there, they can be concentrated in the tissues of any kind of mollusks that you might collect. So I was fascinated to see how many different shells like these I would find on the beach today. I've seen them before, but very small numbers and usually broken apart. The shells are relatively fragile. I rarely see an intact one. So it's really exciting for me today to be able to find matching shells, two shells together, and to get a chance to see what the whole organism, this pen shell, really looks like. So it's a really cool day. I hope you enjoyed this episode from beautiful Florida and Honeymoon State Park. One of my favorite places to go here. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. If you want to learn more about Florida wildlife and plants, check out my Florida playlist. It's really getting pretty extensive. And I've enjoyed so much learning about Florida's flora and fauna. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.